We're going to go ahead and uh, get it kicked off. Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? And uh, welcome to the 2022 Site Coordinator Symposium. Uh, like 11,000 donuts. So excited to have each and every one of you here. Um, I had uh, the privilege and honor to introduce you to our MCs this morning who are going to help to kick us off. Um, three wonderful women who I have had the privilege to work with on the site coordinator network um, over the past few years. And so just excited to have them. Uh, I'll, let's welcome Laura. Let's welcome uh, Sargina and Brazil as our as our MCs for today. And uh, ladies, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to you all because I know it's in good hands. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, thanks for again joining us um, early this morning. Um, we are um, excited for all of the, the things that we are offering you all today, um, along with our um, keynote speaker. And we would like to absolutely, um, well, first let me introduce myself. I'm sorry, I think I jumped the gun a little bit this morning. I was excited. Um, my name is Brazil McIntyre and I am the after school program so supervisor um, for Berkeley Learns with Berkeley Unified School District. And I'm also a um, CAN um, action team and leadership team member, as well as an SLF um, TA fellow. And I will allow my co-host to welcome you as well, or introduce themselves as well, Sargina. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergina Yonan. I am coming from you, uh, well, from Sacramento, but I'm with Region 6. I'm the District Coordinator for Linden Unified School District. Um, I am also a TA coach with ASAP Connects School of Leadership and Facilitation, as well as a CAN um, action team member and uh, leadership, leadership team member, um, Laura. Thanks, Sargina. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Laura Watson. I'm coming from Region 1. I work with Extended Child Care in Sonoma County. I'm the Director of Talent and Quality Initiatives. Um, I am also an Action Team and Leadership Team member with California After School Network, their Site Coordinator Network, um, as well as a TA coach um, through ASAP Connect, their School of Leadership and Facilitation. And um, I oversee the Resource Brokers Team. And I will pass it back to Brazil. All right. So um, we wanted to um, thank our partners that we have um, that are have helped us sponsor this fantastic symposium. Um, our um, presenting sponsor sponsor today is. Um, right brain. And so we would like to thank them and welcome them uh, and um, encourage everyone to find out more about that. Um, and so at this point, um, I think I might have lost my, my um, spot. We're going to go over our agenda for the day. Um, with this agenda, you know, we're going to have our welcome and um, keynote speaker. Um, and then later on in the um, morning, we will transition into our workshops uh, and then, or our first session of workshops. And then at 1145, we will transition into our second workshop um session and then we'll be closing out um this virtual session at 2 p.m this afternoon and then just a reminder for those of you who will be joining us in person um you can go ahead and if you get here early enough um you can do early registration at six o'clock at the sheraton um, and then followed by a um, networking reception at 6.30 at the Republic, uh, which is just up the street. Um, and then those of you who will be here tomorrow as well, um, we'll be having another networking reception at the bank again at 6.30. Uh, and then I'll pass it on to you again, Laura. 
Thank you. Um, and we also have the dates for next symposium for next year, which is fabulous. And it's gonna be in Long Beach. Um, so another sunny, beautiful spot. Uh, the dates for the symposium for 2023 are February 14th through the 17th and registration will go live this Friday. So sign on up. Love to have you. <clears throat> And I think we're good now. We are going to pass it on to our um, keynote speaker, uh, special person in the house. I'm going to pass it on and introduce Jeff Davis. He's the executive director of CAN, California After School Network. Thank you and good morning to the site coordinator symposium. I'm gonna get myself kind of situated here see if I can get some sharing going. And I'm going to be right with y'all. And that's what we're looking for. So good morning, team. And, you know, first off, obviously, I just wanted to start off with my deep gratitude <clears throat> to you, not only for being here, investing in your own professional development, um, but for the work that you do each and every day. I don't need to tell you, but I will, that it changes lives and that it is a critical support to families. And I was certainly reminded of that this morning as I dropped my daughter off at her before school program at the YMCA. Um, give it up for the YMCA. Maybe if I could get uh, some of my crew to get some of those sound effects. Um, but uh, your, your work is critical. And so I just want to thank you for what you do each and every day. It's, it's, so, yeah, let's hear it. Um, I also want to say that this does not happen uh, by accident, uh, bringing this whole thing together, uh, pivoting, and this, this sort of many years, uh, we've been coming up with new terms to describe what it is that we do here. Um, and so the new term, I guess, is called a shivit. It is a, it is a shift and a pivot combined. And that's kind of what we do, right? Um, but I just want to thank everyone on the CAN team for rolling with the punches, right? Like uh, we were going to be doing this in February. And then, of course, there was a surge. And here we are in June. And it's the end of year. And summer programs are starting. And yet many of you are... Uh, still showing up, but just wanting to thank our staff and also wanting to really thank our list of supporters. I know that um, this, again, is something that doesn't happen, um, that couldn't happen without partnership and support. And the way that we've always sort of worked with the Site Coordinator Symposium is that we're not looking for uh, sponsors. We're not looking for vendors. We're not looking for exhibitors. We are really looking for partners that really care about the work of site coordinators and care about improving the work of site coordinators and supporting the work of site coordinators. So just, you know, noting, um, you know, that there's a couple of these partners that have been with us really since early on and um, since the beginning, you know, thinking of seeing Scholastics up there, and also just want to um, really thank Right Brain World for being our title sponsor uh, for multiple years running. Um, and so I just wanna take a moment and actually just invite Meredith from Right Brain, if she is here, if we can get her up on screen, there she is. And, and just wanting to take a moment to offer my deep gratitude for, for your support uh, for, for site coordinators for this event. and. Um, why don't just give you an opportunity to share with us why do you do what you do and why do you think <laughs> it's so important to support the site coordinator symposium? Thanks, Jeff. 
Well, first of all, I'm so honored to sponsor at whatever level is available. You know, I always try to be the biggest sponsor and not because we're a huge company, but because uh, I'm so overwhelmed and so moved by after school education, which is, uh, I knew nothing about when I, when I created Right Brain. And as soon as, um, as soon as Julia Gabor, now of Kid Grit, said to me 11 years ago, I think you need to know about after school education boy, it was like a drug. I mean, I get so high. It's like, uh, it, it, it fulfills a big sense of purpose in me. So first, hello, everyone. And second, uh, I really love the focus of, the, of this conference, that it isn't about um, who can come and pay what to try to sell something. And this is not a conference where we sell stuff. Uh, we don't, yeah, we don't come here with our big booth and pitch our stuff. Our sessions are not us pitching our stuff. And I think that's true for all the people who get a table here. Um, at Right Brain, we believe that, I, I believe that the system of education, that systemically it's so broken and so racist and so um, designed for just those few to get through, uh, meaning the few that, that are not resourced, a few will get through, but it's kind of all designed to, to, um, to keep the kids that we serve in after school, that you serve in after school, you know, right where they are for the most part during the school day. And we think the change in education is happening in after school. It's where the innovators are, um, people who don't have, uh, who are not accredited teachers, I think are some of, if not the best educators in America, so if it were up to right brain, after school, um, after school approaches and modalities and ideologies and passion would, would come kind of, would come where the school day is top down, after school is like bottom up. It's like from the inside of everybody out. And the school day is like from the bureaucratic top and out in and we want after school to inform the school day and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna produce a big conference at some point hopefully with your help jeff where all the presenters are after school coordinators and directors and facilitators um and all the attendees are in school principals and teachers you know that's the that's the goal so i do what i do because i notice a world where young people all people are looking down much more than they're looking up. They're less connected to themselves, their ideas, holistic concepts, big picture, they're distracted, they're anxious, they, you know, they look up less often, they look around less often, they listen less actively. Parts of their brains are just too overwhelmed. Other parts are like super underdeveloped. They think less critically, they process less slowly, they have less empathy, they can't track the emotional experiences of other people. And their self-esteem is just not, there aren't enough experiences and ways for them to elevate their self-esteem. Um, but I think, I see it happen in after school. That's what after school is. It's like these kids come to you guys and your people, your teams, and the teams are like, hello, I see you. I see the whole human that you are. And I'm someone who's a whole human and I didn't get in to the college I wanted to go to because of my SAT scores. I got into lots of schools where my SAT scores didn't matter, but where I wanted to go, it mattered. I resented that it mattered as much as it did when I had so much to give. I didn't go to college. I'm brilliant. I made all sorts of things happen in my life. And I want, I want after school students to know that, I want students to know that whether they're top of the class or not, whether they suck on the test or not, they, they, can, they can like themselves, if not love themselves and have success in their life, whatever that means, running a family, starting a company, um, having wonderful friendships. And, and look, at, look at all these people behind me, if you hear them, they're uh, some sort of African soldiers. <laughs> I'm very honored. Thank you for inviting me, Jeff. And I'm excited to be here and elevate self-esteem and literacy in California. Thank you, Meredith, for, for your passion, and thank you for your ongoing support to site coordinators and, and this event. We, we truly- We would like to title sponsor next year. 
Well, we couldn't we couldn't do this without you, Meredith. And so we we are honored to be in partnership with you. And I also, of course, right, like the staff, our partners, this event is truly an event created by site coordinators for site coordinators and supported through multiple leaders within the field. And so just really wanting to give real big props to our site coordinator planning team, our site coordinator network, site coordinator network leadership team, our partners at ASAP Connect. Um, all of this uh, couldn't happen. And um, and we're we're getting started, but we've we've been in this for a little while. And I just want to also just give real props to uh, to our folks who who opened us up yesterday. Um, yeah, we had uh, uh, Brazil, Corey, and Tracy uh, in a conversation with Michael Funk, and you know, you can see me there in my square. I'm taking notes <laughs> because I've the 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 passion was so palpable, um, but really so, some things that kind of struck me from the opening remarks is that, you know, uh, that we have so much passion and that the kids uh, in our programs deserve everything and that uh, we know what to do from a, from a developmental standpoint um, on how we can create the conditions necessary for kids to thrive. And that it really takes a lot of vulnerability to fight for that, right? Because oftentimes, uh, we are not necessarily seen um, in that way uh, through through the lens of the system. And so, how do we create the conditions that that we know uh, help kids to thrive? And I also uh, just want to thank uh, all the folks who attended and put together last night's game night. It was super fun and uh, and culminated um, with uh, me being able to share a little bit about music and about voice and about how important this opportunity is right now. Um, and so uh, folks got to uh, be treated to hear me and my kids sing Roar uh, by Katy Perry uh, so that we could uh, help to think about uh, this time and, and how we can elevate our voices to meet this moment. And I want to also share that, right, like we are standing on the shoulders of so many who've come before us. And um, this movement to support site coordinators has long been something that's been known in the field as being important. And what I want to do uh, is share, I think, a real sort of fundamental and foundational artifact um, to some of that. Uh, to some of that. And as you can see, I am multitasking, trying to share my screen and sound and get, get this to you. Um, but this is just another way to say thank you to what you, for what you do each and every day. And I want to thank uh, Diego Abancibia for his, uh, for his passion, talent, and putting this together. Um, you can see this was posted in 2016 and it was around for a little while before it was posted. Um, so with that, uh, in gratitude for what you do every day. I began to reflect on my career and realize that my days as a site coordinator have been arguably the most defining and most empowering of my after school experience. I dare say that being a site coordinator prepared me for my biggest challenges of not only my career, but my life. So I write this ode in honor of the site coordinator. The one who is a part-time employee with a full-time attitude, the one who has survived the bullets of lockdowns and also rose to the occasion to help supervise 1,400 students in the midst of a teacher walkout, the one who has had to call 911 because of broken bones and at the same time worried that the family didn't have insurance, the site coordinator who realized that they are, in essence, the bridge between school and family, especially when they heard the father say, I got the message from the school, but if I left work, I wouldn't get paid and my family wouldn't eat. Do sabes? The one who has spent a sleepless night in the emergency room because one of their students laid in one of those rooms. The one who can name every kid in their program along with their nickname. The one who made the call to child protective services and even with the promise of confidentiality, everyone knew it was you, even the parent. But you still don't regret making the call because you took a stand for those that couldn't. 
the one who has heard that their former student was shot or killed in a car accident, the one who also tears up when they heard that one of their students just graduated, the one who heard that their former student who didn't have papers, didn't have a dad, and didn't do time still joined the Marines to serve his country and was shipped to Iraq. The one who can make magic happen with 200 students, 20 bucks in a 99 cent store. The one who gave their last $10 to a student so they can go on that field trip. The one who has survived countless site visits and yet still has to justify the work that they do. The one who has brought in thousands of dollars, if not millions, because of the program they run, only to be the scapegoat of disconnected administrators. The site coordinator who knows the utter excitement of finding the staff member who has it and the shot to the gut when you had a fire, let go, reassign, or whatever term you want to use to let a staff staff member know that they lost their juice. To the psych coordinator who has dealt with the stress of trying to accomplish in three hours what others have trouble in eight, the psych coordinator who has mopped floors, cleaned bathrooms, and was still yelled at for moving a chair in the classroom, the one who was initially not part of the community, but in time earned the trust and respect to become part of that community, to the psych coordinator who has failed but failed forward and had the humility and courage to stand up and triumph, the one that goes by the saying of Admiral Grace Hopper, if it's a good idea, go ahead and do it. It's much easier to apologize than it is to get permission. To the site coordinator who created a third space, not really home, not really school, but really like home and really like school. To the site coordinator who has seen their frontline staff be transformed. To the site coordinator who, in reality, is the backbone of any program, any organization, and of this movement, to you, I say. To you, we say thank you. <laughs> I, I tear up every time, um, every time I, I see that. Um, we're gonna take a, a brief moment. And as we do in the expanded learning world, we take a moment to ground ourselves. And um, there's a reason why we do this. And uh, I mentioned, right, like even in my crazy morning, um, I found myself uh, dropping my daughter off at the before school program, right? Like getting the kids up early, trying to make sure they're fed, they got clothes on, they can get out the door, uh, take them to two different schools, right? My head is already uh, sort of swirling from the morning, right? And so we ground to honor the fact that we're all human beings coming into this space and that we can presence ourselves in the space. But we also do grounding because it's really something that from a scientific perspective helps our biology, right? With all that swirling around us, we need to take a time to sort of just calm our body down, uh, helps our blood pressure. It also helps with our presencing and, and uh, from a neuroscience perspective, it's something that's helpful for us. So it's a tradition that, uh, that we have learned in the, in the system of support for expanded learning. Um, and we've applied it um, uh, with, with just great value. Um, so what we're gonna do is just take three minutes and I'm gonna uh, play for us a three minute meditation. And really, this is an invitation for you. Um, you have three minutes. We invite you to concentrate on your breath, find yourself in a seated position, upright and not uptight. And these next three minutes are for you. And I hope that that space um, was productive for you to find some presence. Um, we've had the opportunity to kind of Right, say, say thank you to a lot of you, right? For the work that you do, for being here, for the support of this event um, and to really sink into um, hearing the ode and, and what this really matters and had a chance to sort of now arrive and just sort of get presence. And what I wanna do is um, actually wanna give you an opportunity. Um, to get into smaller breakout rooms. And the breakout rooms are gonna have about three people in there. And um, just wanting a, a chance to uh, allow folks to answer two questions. And 
I'll ask one of my um, uh, colleagues to to sort of put this in the chat. But uh, who are you, right? Your name and what you do, where you work, um, and um, why do you love this work? So who are you, and why do you love this work? My encouragement is that you allow each person to sort of check in first and and answer that prompt. And then if there's additional time to just sort of talk to one another. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put you in those rooms now. You're gonna have about three people. You'll have about six minutes. Um, so uh, what we know is that the foundation of all of this work is relationship. Um, so I hope that uh, you enjoy uh, getting a chance to uh, discuss with or meet new people, etc. So I have now opened up all the rooms. You should be seeing a prompt to join the room. So I'm going to invite you to go ahead and join those rooms now. Take us back, Mr. Jeff. We weren't done. We were too passionate. <laughs> I love it. And that does not surprise me at all. And, you know, all to say, right, this might feel like a, a, a lot of sort of like, okay, we're going to set up and get grounded and we're going to uh, connect with one another. But all of these things are really important, right? And um, uh, we'll share more about this in a little bit. But uh, it's, it's really interesting and powerful as this work has evolved. One of the things that we've really found is that, um, that the, the position of site coordinator and working on site in general can feel really isolating. Um, and it it's really sort of fills people's cup when they come to places like this and they just get the chance to experience the fact that they're not alone in their day-to-day -day struggles and something that... Um, that they've found a lot of meaning in, um, in these events. And so again, uh, thank you. And I, I, I'm glad that you were able to cultivate, right, that generative passion with one another in uh, the, in those breakout rooms and feel free to give love to each other in the chat. Um, you know, thank each other for, for having that opportunity to connect. And I know that there uh, is never enough time, um, but thank you for taking the time to ground and presence yourself. And man, um, we have been through some times and uh, I just want to, again, just acknowledge how, uh, how expanded learning and how site coordinators have, have risen to the moments that have been put in front of us. And, and oftentimes, you know, you were the one that was um, underpaid without health benefits and were on the first lines and the front lines of creating learning hubs and in-person learning opportunities for those students that need it at most, helping them meet their basic needs, get access to technology and access to enrichment um, during those times of, of social isolation. Um, last year during the virtual summit, I remember we shared uh, something from Washington Unified here in West Sacramento where they uh, each one of their staff uh, had a little segment of the song, You've Got a Friend in Me. Um, and they sent it out to all of their staff, right? So you found a way um, to share love through through some of the most challenging times. And um, just, uh, we all had to um, shift and pivot or shivit in terms of how we, how we did what we did and um, really proud of the site coordinator network leadership team and the CAN staff as well, uh, partners at ASAP Connect we realized that times were different and we needed to do different and we did come together. Um, and sometimes uh, it was just enough for us to know that we weren't alone um, in those spaces. And we created the container for that. And as I'd mentioned for a while, um, this was really building on, um, on a lot of work and uh, needing to uh, really uh, give a shout out to, um, to, the, to our partners at the California Department of Education's Expanded Learning Division, uh, as well as the System of Support for Expanded Learning. Pew, pew, pew. Um, years, years, years ago, um, 
as right, like things like the ode to site coordinators were coming out and so many uh, folks in the California field of expanded learning were talking about how do we provide critical support in this important role of site coordinators? One of the things that we did was we brought site coordinators together in a community of practice. And this was right around the advent of the quality standards and the continuous quality improvement process. So the continuous, uh, the, the, the um, focus of the community of practice was on quality and continuous quality improvement. Um, but in partnership with uh, regional county leads and local programs, we brought site coordinators together and we found that the experience was so powerful um, that many of those regions, Julian Ventura, uh, Ernesto Duran, um, John Duran in uh, Region 10, uh, and others were really in support of, okay, we did this on a regional level, but we need to uh, do this at a statewide level. And this gave rise to uh, the first ever Site Coordinator Symposium, California Dream, and this was five years ago. Um, Many of you uh, who were present for that will remember um, Nate Houston's keynote. And uh, at the time, he was a site coordinator for the Center for Fathers and Families. Um, you can see on the wall in the app that these seven um, steps to impact that he had shared first at that keynote are now part of an ebook. Um, and I was uh, I was talking with him recently. And I, had him text me this because um, it it just it there was one part that I was like, can you just say a few words about what you mean by positive affirmations? And so this this is what he says: All geniuses talk to themselves. It is our self talk that determines what we believe. In order to go, in order to go there, we must start here. Speak positively to yourself. Um, just absolute genius words, inspiring words from a site coordinator now with Mentor California. And uh, how perfect is that? Because he's been a mentor to thousands. Um, this also gave rise to work um, to create the site coordinator network. Um, so this was... Right, so now what are we looking at? Three, four years ago, um, a, a group of folks from all throughout the state with a bunch of different perspectives, but mostly the perspective of site coordinators came together to create what is now the site coordinator network. And that image is from, uh, from that, very, uh, the, that very kickoff meeting. And uh, the network then began to really take ownership of how are we providing these supports and really planning um, uh, our annual site coordinator symposium. Um, thanks to those of you who joined us on the ship uh, down in Long Beach, the Queen Mary, but definitely a memorable uh, experience. Um, and then, of course, uh, a couple of years ago, the last time we were in person was in Fresno for California Love. And last year, um, we also found a way to come together virtually and, and then here we are. But I also wanna say that um, we don't see that this is the only game in town. One of the things that the California After School Network is all about is about mission, not organization. And for us, it's really important that site coordinators and, uh, and site level staff have the supports they need, that they have the conditions they need to thrive and to develop as leaders. And we understand that there are multiple opportunities out there, those that are provided by the system of support for expanded learning in local regions, pow, 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 um, and uh, those that are uh, provided uh, through our partners at ASAP Connect, those that are, um, provided by our partners at the California School Age Consortium, the Partnership for Children and Youth, and other partners, right? So there are ways that we could really think about how we can provide comprehensive support to site coordinators for years. Um, and I don't know that we have that pathway or that 
diversified pathway fully articulated through our technical assistance system, but it's something that we continue to hold as a vision. And so that brings me to our theme for this conference, Back to the Future. And what I love about our theme and, and what I have come to understand of why the site coordinator network and the planning team chose this theme is that we've all gone through a bunch of stuff and it's not normal. What we've, what we've gone through and what was normal before was never acceptable in the first place. And so we are not going back to normal. We are going back to something new. Um, I'm realizing also that I'm going to run short on time here. Um, so this does make me think of um, uh, our vision, right? And so I'm gonna say a couple things about this um, that, uh, that I'm gonna try to get to in a couple minutes so that we can get to some voice. Um, we have a golden opportunity in California. We know from the science that we create the conditions that are necessary to help children and youth thrive, not only in school, but in life. Science continues to tell us that our quality standards make these conditions happen. And we have unprecedented circumstances in California. We at California After School Network have really couched our vision and our approach and our purpose in the broader social iceberg. We acknowledge that uh, there's issues of inequity, racism, injustice in our society, and we have made the, the stance that we're going to be proactively anti-racist and that we're going to uh, work with equity at the center. So that, right, um, part of that is that uh, everyone, no matter their identities, feels safe and supported in our programs. With that, I also want to uh, acknowledge Pride Month and, uh, and wish everybody a happy Pride Month. And in doing this, uh, we see ourselves want to touch on two things, of the field, for the field, and as a catalyst for quality. And of the field, for the field, we can't do this alone. And we participate as part of systems and we work collaboratively within those systems to support programs. So first off, just a shout out to our system of support for expanded learning. Pew, pew, pew. Um, because um, we know that our field is burgeoning, it's growing quickly, and that there has not been more investment in our technical assistance system and that uh, you know there's a lot of pressure on the system right now, but we're also holding this aspirational vision to support the whole child, a vision that has been informed by multiple sectors in our field when they told us it is not good enough to tinker around the edges of inequitable systems. We have to create something new with our students and families at the center of that. And that's what really this back to the future theme really means to me. I think that we have, and I'm just gonna whip through a bunch of this. We have a, uh, a huge opportunity in California to really center on our kids and families. I wanna also say that in, in that, um, that we wanna to commit to the human beings in this field, right? Um, I actually came across this slide as data from like a site coordinator survey maybe five, six years ago. Um, and I think that a lot of this still holds. And we believe that employment and expanded learning can be part of broader career pathways and that our current funding in California can be blended and braided to make sure that there is full-time benefited work for the people that pour their passion into our kids and families. And it's something that is part of our strategic plan moving forward at the California After School Network. So you know that this is part of our DNA, that we love you and we support you. Um, but why? So the last thing that I do wanna share with you 
is why we do what we do. And I'm, I'm going to uh, beg your pardon for just a couple extra minutes of your time. And what, what, I, what I really want to center in is why we do this work. We have the opportunity to create the type of contexts that our kids and families deserve. But I don't want to tell you what that context is. I want to let them tell you. So this is going to be the mic drop for this presentation. I just want us to have a chance to listen to the youth themselves. School right now is a place I go to learn how to copy, how to answer a question on a test correctly, how to beat the system. All we're doing is learning for tests and not learning for life. It's the way it's being taught. It's just making kids lose interest in it. Sitting in a classroom for eight periods a day. It's the same thing over and over again until you go home. I hear my friends saying like, I'm exhausted, I have stress, I have anxiety. I see what's stacked up against me and I'm overwhelmed by it. High school is a very vulnerable place. The schools are where a lot of kids lose their self. People are afraid to share their dreams. If someone can't feel safe, then they can't open up their mind or just say their opinion or idea. They bring up all these people to create the curriculum, but not ask us what we want to learn. I can't speak for everyone, but my experience is school is setting me up for failure. My name is Sophie. Taj. Destiny. Usman. Angela. Travella. Will. Caitlin. Raul, otherwise known as Real Talk. Well, my future school would be, oh, it's like so vivid in my mind right now. They would have options for learning environments. At a park or be in a museum. Instead of sitting in a class and learning from a textbook. Teach how will all this matter to you in the future. Creating a curriculum that's, that's so interdisciplinary. In English, we would write books. We would write our thoughts down for the future generations. It would be so cool if there was an entire class dedicated to creating structures, um, you know, from your imagination. And there would be a class called Life where we just talk about things that we're experiencing in life and how we could overcome it. It breathes an environment of collaboration. A lot of partner work, a lot of group activities. They can communicate with each other and help each other achieve their dreams. Instead of having like a parent-teacher conference, I think there should be student-teacher conferences. To teach a person not only about math, science, reading and writing. But also help students find out who they are as people. The Future School is adventurous. Collaborative. Creative. Energetic. Inspiring. Fun. Passionate. it will be awesome. Oh, I'm really excited now. So let's go back to the future, y'all. Enjoy. Symposium 2022. It's just a, just a, Sarkina, bringing you guys back. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to share with us a little bit, not only about the vision, but really kind of getting us to remember our why. Uh, and kicking us off. Uh, Sarkina, Laura, and, and uh, Brazil. I'm going to give the last word to you all uh, to close us out in this morning session. Thanks, Troy. Um, so what's next? Let's look at what's next. We're going to take a quick minute, 10 minute break, um, but just be mindful it is 955 and sessions. The first workshop session is starting at 10 um, and it goes till 1130. So that's the session one workshops. Uh, then we're going to take a 15 minute break. So take that time for yourself, uh, do whatever you need to do. And then uh, we'll have the session two workshops, <clears throat> which are also an hour and a half long. Um, and then we will do the closing, 1.20 to um, 2 o'clock, and then we will be done for the day. And I'm going to pass it back to Sergina so she can just check back in about registration for the evening. Yeah, and just a quick reminder that those of you heading to Sacramento this afternoon, uh, you guys can uh, register at 6 o'clock at the Sheraton um, and then head on over to the Republic at 6.30 for networking reception. There'll be some games. You'll be able to meet some new people, have a good time. Um, if you're 21 and over, have a couple cocktails. So uh, yeah, pass it back to you, Troy. 
Jennifer, I think you're on mute. Troy, you're on mute. I got it. Thank you. I was trying to technical difficulties. I just want to make sure that everyone can find their way where they're going in the next couple minutes. Um, apologies for taking your break, but using the app or using the desktop, you can find the location for all of the workshops um, that are listed for this first session. So just want to make sure that you know where you're going and things like that. This room will stay open for a few minutes after. Um, for any of those that, of you that may have technical difficulties or just have questions. Um, again, lots of gratitude to you, Jeff, for uh, kicking us off this morning. And to my wonderful MCs, thank you for all that you do to kick, get us started this morning. So everyone enjoy themselves and we will see you back. You use this link to come back later this afternoon. We'll see you this afternoon for a closeout, okay? Till then, take care. <laughs>